What's up, FemBots? I'm Poir, and I want to share with you guys some giga tips I found that make the game considerably easier. This game is hard, but with the right tools, the game is still hard. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, these will actually make the game easier. Before we begin though, hit that like button with your nose so this video gets pushed up algorithms booty to help more people. And comment down below any more tips you guys have found. Now, tipso, start to. First is probably the most useful handle in the game, and it was underneath our noses the entire time. The Greatsword of Fate handle. The starting greatsword for the strength class, as well as the acidic greatsword handle. While Technique Builds got the two dragons for easy parries, which I made a build video around if you want to check it out, Motivity kind of got nothing, except now. These handles do a perfect block that only costs one fable that essentially perfect guards any attack for almost two seconds. Most people probably drop these weapons without realizing their full potential. This handle just makes the game a lot more safer to guard against those nasty combos or red attacks. In combination with the P-Organ upgrades. With various P-Organ upgrades, you can break the enemy's stagger fast, which you can get up to 5 slots, which is halfway to breaking any enemy's weapon since they're perfect guards, or more than enough to trigger the white stagger bar 2 times or more at battle, where you simply need to do a charge R2 to get that visceral attack which will fill up your fable back to repeat the process. So basically you just want to do heavy charge attacks and just perfect guard with this. And again, the window is more than generous, which is especially potent against multi-hitting flurries, which gets you three to four perfect parries easily without any skill required on your part. The only downside is the handles are fairly slow and the starting greatsword handles moveset is not the greatest. The acid one is better, but it isn't found to the last chapter in the game. So yeah, it's more of a new game plus option. But you can still use technique weapons with it due to the crank system. Also, keep in mind that damage types are different. For the acid handle, you want to put only slash weapons with it, while the Great Sword of Faith handle can do both stab and slash, although you kind of lose damage on either stab or slash depending on the blade has not many scale with both. Which, if you didn't know, these scaling symbols affect your damage. If you see this downward symbol, it means your damage is being reduced whenever you do that specific damage type animation. So, you want to pair weapons with the correct handles to better boost your damage. But yeah, this handle is really, really strong for players not good at the parry, but still want something to counter the red attacks or last flurries that are the ones that usually kill you. Again, for P-Organ upgrades, you want the ones shown here, especially the stiffness one in Phase 4 ASAP. Not only for these handles, but just in general, you want it for all builds for your perfect guard. If you didn't start strength though, you can buy the Great Sword of Fate handle from the merchant in chapter 1, just before the first clown boss. And the acid one is found here in this chest in the Arch Abbey outer wall section, in this uh, general vicinity. You can't miss it when you go through here, but unfortunately I don't have the full run to it, so you have to make do with that information. But sometimes pulling off a charge attack is too slow, or sometimes the enemy is too far away, or sometimes they just go super sand mode and pull out a bunch of bullcrap that just stops you from getting that last charge attack off, which makes the white bar fade and then you lose out on your critical attack. Well, that is where shot puts come in. Every build, every player needs to have these. These are throwables that deal a lot of stagger damage. You can carry up to three by default, which is more than enough, but essentially as soon as you see the white bar pop up, you throw this and a single one will break the guard and get your visceral state, easy peasy. The good thing is that you can buy these infinitely by going to the merchant in the Malum district, at the stargazer, go into the lobster room after unlocking it, and stick to the right side of the room. Go up the stairs and there he is! He also sells every single throwable in the game. Which by the way, throwables are OP. If you wanted a crutch, it's throwable items. They deal a good amount of damage, can apply status to burn or shock or decay enemies, and with P-Organ upgrades you can carry a ton on you and nearly phase bosses by throwing your entire stock at them. They are kind of expensive, yes, but I do think levels don't matter too much in this game, at least compared to what these are capable of doing to the boss's health. These just give more damage than investing into a damage stat where it matters. But at the very least, at least get the shot put ones, trust me. And the last OP thing is, which might get patched, so warning there, because it's definitely unintentional, but it's the Aegis Shield Arm. By default, it's kind of whatever. It lets you guard nicely if your weapon has poor block reduction, like technique weapons. If you line up the red glow with an enemy's attack, you'll do a blast boom in her face, and you can even parry with it by hitting wire triangle, but that has really tight timing similar to perfect guarding. So what makes this OP? 
Well, I found this on Reddit by Intrepid Earth. They detail the keyboard functions for mouse and keyboard users, but this also is possible on the controller. Basically, while you hold up the shield with L2, you can hit the block button repeatedly while still holding the shield L2 and perfect guard with it, either by lining up the parries like normal or just spamming L1 over and over again. So again, while holding L2, spam L1 with your pointer finger and you will perfect guard every single attack and easily stagger the enemy, which you follow up with your strong attack or shot put to do your visceral attack. So another powerful tool to perfect guard easily with. The drawback though is you are limited on your Legion bar, so eventually that will go away unless you use Legion magazines to refill, but there's also P-Organ upgrades you can take like Auto Regen Legion or Gain Legion on enemy kill to help with that. And like the handle, you can take the Fable gain on perfect guard to build up Fable as well. The bonus tip is the perfection grindstone you get late into your first playthrough. This makes all your normal blocks perfect guard, which benefits from the Peorgan stuff I mentioned earlier. Now, it only lasts 20 seconds by default, but with the Peorgan upgrades, you can carry two uses of it and make it last longer as well. And again, it gets you those visceral attacks, which may be more useful than the elemental stuff. Or if you are an advanced build with an elemental weapon anyways, I would just straight up use this grinder over everything else for easy, perfect parries and guard breaks. Particularly potent against the last ending fight and Laxasia fight since they attack so often. Or you can just, I don't know, beat the game twice and go to new game plus two to unlock phase seven of the P-Organ so all your blocks can become perfect guards instead for free. Nice. Easy mode is unlocked only after beating the game twice. <laughs> but you can buy the grindstone from Vanini's Butler after finding the great Vanini collection in Area 10 in the location you meet Alidoro the second time. And last general combat tip excluding these things is Strafe. Unless you're confident at pairing, always be moving left or right around enemies that aren't gigantic like the Puppet King. And flick your block button occasionally or dodge and you'll be able to get backstabs against the humans or human-like enemies or just in general, avoid most attacks. Like the Romeo fight for example, his attacks are really easily strafed or dodgeable. Even against his fire flurry, you want to dodge to the right of him and slightly forward for most of the hits to miss. Now, if you use the other things I mentioned, you probably don't need to do that, but I definitely recommend strafing or even simply running away, which works against a lot of the red attacks that aren't rush forward attacks. Think of it this way. If the enemy is small or does a vertical or thrust attack, you want to be strafing. If the enemy does a big AOE or circular attack, you want to back away or run away. I can't stress how useful this is against like the beast swamp boss as well. But yeah, those are probably the most effective tips to help you guys out that are struggling, with most of it having to do with parrying or stagger, which is pretty much the case for any game that features that kind of system. Sekiro, go for stagger instead of damage. Neo 2, go for key breaks. Wulong, go for the stagger. And perfect guards are our gateway to that. And well, charge strong attacks. Obviously, pay attention to enemy weaknesses as well. You want to match fire against the monster or corrupted humans, electric against the bots, and acid against, uh, I guess everything else, I guess. <laughs> but if these tips helped you, perfect guard that like button and comment down below any more useful tech you guys have found. If you're looking for a technique build, check out my double dragon build in the end screen, which you may want to add all these things I mentioned here, excluding the handles to that, to make you the ultimate parry god. And there's more builds to come, so make sure to subscribe for more Lies of American P epicness uh, I, uh the nose made that whole I, I, yeah the, i swear <laughs> oh yeah if you're wondering about the berserk costume uh this is a mod pc master race